Now let's move on to today's perspective. And my guest today, if she isn't already famous and far more importantly vital to the future of our planet, she soon will be. Toby Kears has been named as one of Time magazine's 100 emerging leaders, one of those shaping the future in areas like business, sport, politics, health, science or activism. But why? Well, she's an evolutionary biologist known for her pioneering research on the flows and architecture of plant fungal networks, which are vital to her, our future. Well, let's meet her then. Toby Kears, Professor of Evolutionary Biology at uh, Freie University in Amsterdam. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme. Um, let's just explain this a little bit more, um, first of all, because we're not talking about any kind of fungi, are we? We're talking about, you know, the kind of fungi that we see regularly if we go for a, a walk in the roots. We're talking about the kind of fungus which kind of penetrates plants' roots. So we're talking about underground fungi, aren't we? Exactly. So I study the trade between plant roots and one of the most important types of beneficial fungi, and that's called mycorrhizal fungi. And mycorrhizal fungi, they make partnerships with about 90% of all plant species. They form these complex networks underground, and plants feed them carbon in the form of sugars and fats. And in return, the fungi forage in the soil and provide nitrogen and phosphorus. So in the lab, what we do is we actually track the flows of the nutrients inside the networks to understand how fungi make decisions, where and when to trade their nutrients. And what they do is absolutely extraordinary. They enact these sophisticated trade strategies like holding on to resources until they get a better price or moving resources into a place where demand is higher. So it's this it's really an underground economy that is been around for hundreds of millions of years, and it's surprising we don't know more about it. Yeah, it's amazing. You sound like our business editor. I mean, explain to us though why it's so important to understand this. Well, it's really important to understand this because these mycorrhizal fungi are a major carbon sink. So in 2021, we started an organization called SPUN, which stands for the Society for the Protection of Underground Networks. And the aim is to actually map and protect mycorrhizal networks across the entire Earth. And this is important because these underground ecosystems containing these fungi are actually getting destroyed. And mycorrhizal fungi, they help limit global warming by drawing carbon underground. So I don't think most people know, but 75% of all terrestrial carbon is stored underground. And these fungal networks keep that carbon underground. So do you think that's the most important thing that all the research that you've done has discovered, you know, that, well, more than just help um, in, in battling climate change? Yeah, well, I think what, by looking at these networks, we can understand how those carbon flows are under the control of fungi. We can ask about what sort of, what sort of uh, parts of the soil make them draw down more carbon. Because billions of tons of CO2 are flowing from plants into these fungi, we really need to do, understand what they do with that carbon once it's inside their networks. So is there a way of exploiting that then to try and tackle climate change artificially? <laughs> well, that's what we're trying to do. And, and right now we're just doing these kinds of experiments in the lab where we try to understand what speeds up the flow of the carbon once it's inside the network. What are the problems um, for this fungi then? What is there that's, that's stopping it? I mean, uh, pre presumably just, you know, human advancement, erosion, agriculture, just concrete as well. Uh, presumably all that kind of thing prevents it from happening. Exactly. So we're really worried about the destruction of these mycorrhizal networks, whether it's from land being converted for building concrete covering these underground ecosystems, even just the warming of the climate really changes what's happening underground. But because people don't see it, they don't see these underground ecosystems, they're less aware of their importance. These networks, they provide nutrients for the Earth's forests, their grasslands, and even the crops that we depend on. So if we want to protect the biodiversity above ground, we need to start with protecting the biodiversity below ground. And where do you go to start? I mean, I've, I've been looking at the list of some of the places you've been to. I mean, you've been to the South Pacific last summer. I know you were in Italy amidst, amidst the drought. You've been to Patagonia, a whole series of different places to look at the different types and different kinds of, uh, of plants and, and species, if you like, that you need to examine. 
Exactly. So we work with local scientific collaborators all across the earth to try to understand what mycorrhizal communities are where. So just about two weeks ago, we returned from Lesotho in southern Africa, where we were sampling fungi with local scientists in these high altitude wetlands that store enormous amounts of carbon. And people just aren't paying attention to these wetlands in Africa. So the idea is to work with local scientists from Lesotho and understand what mycorrhizal communities are there and what they're doing. It feels like every time you switch on the television, and, and I, we're probably guilty of this ourselves as well, you know, there's bad news about the environment. It's interesting to hear, you know, is this a positive thing that we can, that, that we can grasp on and maybe government should be getting more involved to provide more funding to try and, you know, boost this, if you like, as a way of tackling climate change? Exactly. So we really see these as sort of undiscovered climate heroes. And so I think even governments being involved in and incorporating these underground ecosystems into biodiversity surveys and really protecting underground ecosystems is the way forward. If we look across the earth now, about 70 percent of the estimated biodiversity hotspots like the Amazons of the underground, are unprotected. So we have to get government governments involved to start protecting these ecosystems. I mean, just hearing you mention the Amazon there, is it, it presumably it's quite depressing for someone in your line of work, particularly, I mean, the Amazon maybe is a little bit more protected now than it was just a few weeks ago, but it's still very, very difficult, isn't it, to, to, to kind of feel optimistic when you see some of the things, particularly uh, the rainforest, uh, uh, that are going on and that humans are doing. Yeah, it's really hard for us to see, especially in terms of logging. There's really strong scientific evidence that when you log an ecosystem, these networks are destroyed. And the thing is about these mycorrhizal fungi, they will come back, but we want to make sure that the communities are just as healthy and diverse as the ones that we've destroyed. How optimistic are you? I mean, is, is this... Um... I was going to say, is this the answer? I mean, presumably I'm, I'm taking it much too far here, but uh, do you think there is optimism for the future? I think that people who work with these mycorrhizal fungi tend to be optimistic. We just we see just how important they are and how they control the ecosystem. So as long as we just get people on board with protecting them and understanding who is where and what they're doing, then I think we'll be in a good position. Good to hear some positive news for what is a Monday morning here in Paris. Thank you very much for joining us. Toby Kears there, so uh, joining us. Uh, she's a professor of evolutionary biology at uh, Fry University in Amsterdam. Thanks.